Rusty in Canada. Thanks for holding them. We'll go to everybody else that's holding, like Derek. Uh, go ahead, Rusty. Alex, how's it going, buddy? Pretty good, brother. I just want to thank you for having me on the show. It's an absolute honor. I've been listening to you for uh, just over six months now, and uh, I, I just want to say that there was some times, you know, I did my research on you, and I, there's a lot of people that are getting at you. It's easy to doubt and turn away, but I gave you the benefit of the doubt. I listened to your show religiously for six months. Your team, the people that you surrounded yourself with, they counterbalance you and who you are. I think you guys got a lot to offer to combating this new world order. And I think, in all honesty, we've already won. We just have to stick to our guns and, and be consistent and just do what we believe is right. And, you know, good always prevails. We might have to go through some stuff, but, uh, you know, it, it, to me, there's a lot of hope here. And you guys are uh, definitely, uh, yeah, I respect Well, you're the type honest. of call I love because you're talking about hope. And I need to do that more. I get so focused on the bad that's happening it's good to show the good that's going on. In fact, I've told my reporters, we should show the good cops. We should show the good people in government, the good private citizens, the good everybody. And I, I want to hold up the good. Sometimes that's better to dispel the darkness is to hold up the good so then you recognize the darkness even better. I tend to just focus on the darkness, the darkness, the darkness, like people are going to do something about it instead of leading by example. So you've hit a good critical point there. But I was thinking about this the other day. The Lake Cohen Tell Pro works and these operations work, and this has been declassified, the White House regulations are, bragged about it, Cass Sunstein, and I'm glad you raised this, is they put out a claim, just, you know, just a meme. Uh, Alex Jones is this, Alex Jones is that, you know, Alex Jones is a hundred bad things, and then just hope people get diverted off by that instead of looking at what I'm actually covering and saying. Because if you'll actually listen to what I'm covering and saying, you'll find out about 95% of it uh, is open source publicly admitted, maybe 5% speculation. You know, sometimes I might be 80% right about something that I'm predicting down the road. But when it comes to what I'm generally covering, we're talking high 90s accuracy. And I thought about the, the Paul Revere contest. It, it's actually, I was corrected uh, over the weekend. Felt like the weekend, the last two days, uh, the uh, July 4th holiday by my crew. It's over 600 entries. So we'll have to announce it sometime later in the month because I've got to announce who you know who the real winners are here and not do a a uh, weak job of this or 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 a cattywampus you know crooked job of this. But I mean, what a positive thing! One hundred and twenty thousand dollars in prizes to then have six hundred films, some of which are as good as anything you see on HBO. But from a liberty perspective together getting millions of views now, that is money well spent. It sounds like a lot of money, folks. In, in media, it's not a lot of money. Uh, but I did it to, to, to really imp to give people a focus to empower themselves. And who knows what connections will come out of that or what filmmakers will then you know meet each other and what will happen. I did it to try to put some funding. The globalists put billions into globalist propaganda every year. We just put $120,000 into it, haven't paid it yet. We've had dozens of contests. We pay them all. We will. And how could anybody say I'm negative or bad? You know, they'll say, well, I admit he woke me up, but he's a bad guy. He's an agent. Or, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, who, who put out $120,000 to get, well, my listeners did by supporting me. You did this. You are as big a part of this as I am to get $120,000 to get people thinking out there as seed money to then make all these great films from different angles. I mean, that's all we are is a focal point for all these other activists and all these other leaders and all these other people that are being abused to have a debate to wake people up. That's our agenda is to get people thinking, not even what we're thinking. So of course I'm for real, of course I'm good. And of course they've got to attack that and say I'm not because they know full well I'm for real and evil cannot stand it. More calls coming up. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. Uh, let's talk to Derek in Alabama, then we're going to go to uh, William and Grant and 
uh, James and others. Uh, no, no, actually, James is first up. Then we're going to go to Derek. No, no, I, I get this so confused sometimes on the phone system because I try to go in order. Derek in Alabama, let's go to you. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing, Alex? Good, sir. Welcome. Um, I want to tell you I appreciate everything you do for the liberty and people of this country. You know, I, I really do appreciate it. And I just had a couple of points, you know. I was flipping through the news the other night, and uh, I never really stopped on many of the na mainstream channels, but I was, I caught Inside Edition. And, man, I'm going to tell you, they did you wrong, Alex. You know, on the whole uh, Michael Hastings thing. Uh, what did they do? Oh, that they they painted you up to be just an outright liar. They took you out of contact, had their own little experts. I say that with quotation marks, you know. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was pretty bad. Well, I can't keep track of all the TV shows and newspapers that are doing the same tactic. They're trying to assassinate my character uh, ahead of perhaps setting me up with drugs or who knows what uh, or killing me. Uh, and the order has definitely gone out. Liberal, conservative, libertarian, fake outfits. And in every case, they, uh, I mean, I've had his best buddy on who said he went to the funeral and talked to the wife. And she says, I'm going to bring down whoever did this, close quote. They think he was probably killed. And then they criticize me in the media for saying it should be investigated. Where is the media's instinct? Well, they're not media. They're not news. They're not journalists to stick up for each other. Uh, I mean, in the old days, if a reporter got killed, it was a big investigation regardless, even if it looked like it was a cut-and-dry case. Uh, this is clearly foul play uh, all over the place, and they're going out. I mean, you would think that a day after I had his buddy on, who got the email and all of it, saying they're coming after me, I'm going into hiding, I'm getting death threats, uh, and that the family thinks they killed him, you would think that'd be national news. But no, no coverage because it's a bunch of cowards that all they want is their paycheck. And they don't get that once everybody sells out, total tyranny comes in. They just don't understand how the insecurity is in that they have no honor. And uh, so I didn't see it. And I, I, I saw comments online about it. I just didn't really pay attention. But listen, I come on air and say we can't let them kick Rush Limbaugh off the air with their boycotts. Uh, and, you know, uh, he's not perfect, and I have problems with a lot of what he does, but at least he's pro-Second Amendment. And, you know, he's the biggest show in the world uh, with 20-something million listeners. And then I add, you know, I've been up against him in cities and gotten better ratings than him. And then they write an article saying, I say I'm bigger than Rush Limbaugh. And, you know, it, and that I'm a liar. And, and then they show statistics to say I'm a liar. And it's just you realize... They want people to think I'm a liar. And maybe I should be glad they're trying to assassinate my character instead of me. Um, but see, they're trying to assassinate Liberty's character by assassinating me. And I, pre I appreciate your call. Anything else, Derek? Uh, yeah, I just uh, I wanted to let people know that I think people see the news and, and they hear what you say. And they think that these things with the police and the corruption, that it only goes on in large cities. But I live in a town of 5,000 people. I see abuses every day. I watch the police drag race up and down the main highway. I watch black helicopters fly over my apartment at least once a week, sometimes twice. And I mean, they and then circle for 35, 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, they're looking through your walls. I know, they ship the drugs in and then use it as an excuse to spy on all of us. So sick. They ship the terrorists in and then use them as an excuse. It's, it's elementary. You're exactly right. And I just want people to know that this thing don't just go on in big cities. They go on in little towns, too. You know, it's not a big city problem. It's a countrywide problem. And it's going to get worse. As the economy collapses, they're converting everything to the police state economy. Uh, I, I mean, uh, how could I sit down by a group of people talking about how they're going to work for the NSA and all so proud of it like they're graduating to a new plateau of the galaxy or something. It was just, it was just disgraceful, despicable, 
and painful because they're not even really bad people. They're just idiots. I appreciate you calling in. It really gets to me. I, but again, we should be more positive. A lot of people are waking up. James in Detroit. Folks said that uh, NAFTA and GATT would deindustrialize Detroit. I guess they were conspiracy theorists. James, you're on the air. Welcome. Alex, you are a godsend, a savior to us. Because oh, please. Since I, since I first started listening to you, Hmm, 14, 15 years ago, the black helicopters dusting a small town outside of Boston. You had a, a couple people call in. Everybody got the flu. Uh, all well, they saw it fly over the school with spray tanks and even got photos as it sprayed them and everybody got sick. Yeah. We are under attack by criminals. It's, yeah. it's a basic, simple group of people. They are career criminals. They own the banks. Nothing but short of country control is entertainment to them. Uh, a plane, a jet, an island, none of that stuff matters to them. Now it's total global control, as you've said. Jesse running for president would be great. He would have to find a system as, as, as massive and as efficient as Organized for America was for Obama. Now it turned into Organized for Action, which is, you know, attacking across the NRA and all of the, uh, all, all of the other conservative groups. There would be a very difficult system to overthrow because it is so. We massive. have to overthrow it individually in our own areas by not complying, by saying no, by putting our bodies against the machinery. The, the, the government machinery comes to a halt the minute we realize it's illegitimate and start withdrawing our compliance. And that means verbally. That means when somebody's out of line, you don't lay down to it. God bless you, sir. You want to talk about the Iraq invasion? Go ahead. Here, here's what happened. Young soldiers were in these oil tankers that they confiscated on the highways, not filled with oil, filled halfway with gold bricks. Many of these young Marines were taking pictures with their camera phones of these events and these abductions of these trucks and tankers. Inside, front to back, filled to the halfway level, gold bricks, Alex, the size of regular, you know, gigantic building block bricks. Were you there? No, I was not there. No, I've seen the pictures, and now I, I tried long before I realized I have to not save the address because after this stuff sits on the web for a couple of days and someone spots it, it's erased, I've now been trying to capture as many things to my hard drive as I can. Okay, but the point is, but, what are you saying? A bunch of looting went on in Iraq? Well, well, well the, the, the gold was probably the first fringe benefit. The second French benefit was massive amounts of these super bills. You remember it all being spoken about 200, 300 billion parcels of these bills uh, hidden, hidden in walls of uh, buildings and outposts, et cetera, along with these. I mean, all the, all the leads for the tankers was to grab the, the, their gold. Second and foremost, the, the, the super bills just disappeared to the people who were looking the other way. All right, well, send me, a and, send me an email about it so I understand it. I appreciate your call, James. Good to hear from you. Uh, let's talk to William in Connecticut. Thanks for holding, William. William's listening to his uh, radio. Put him on hold. Let me try him again. Grant in Colorado, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing, Alex? Good, sir. All right, so on the 4th of July, I went to a, uh, a gated community, and this was a private security officer, but I'm talking full tactical, flak jacket, you know, magazine, holsters, everything. Outside of a gated community just to get in for the 4th of July. I don't know who was there. But, yeah, it, was a, it wasn't police. It was a private security firm. And it's just, yeah, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, they're doing this everywhere. It's like a status thing, like in Latin American mafia and stuff, to have guys with guns as status. It's status now to be groped. It's status to have riot police. They had riot police out at checkpoints. We have articles up in riot gear to fight terrorists. And... No, that it's for us. They're just getting us used to riot police everywhere. Gee, I wonder why. No, oh, yeah, I was driving up, and I was, you know, after listening to the stuff that's happened, I was like, oh, I'm going to get checked. He didn't check us. He just wanted to know who we knew in the neighborhood. But again, it's just making those connections. And then uh, I had a question I wanted to Well, no, I mean, it gets you used to always being questioned like you live in the former USSR. Exactly. It's, it's all about learning to have hands put on you, learning to be questioned. Go ahead. And then the question I wanted to field, so in elementary school, I was in the class with John Benet Ramsey. I'm still involved in that case, and about two years ago, they, two detectives from Boulder PD came up and asked for a cheap, cheek swab, and before I listened to you, so I gave them a cheek swab, and they both told me it would be destroyed when they're done with the case, and I called about two days ago because of 
listening to you and asked them if it had been destroyed. And they said, oh, no, they misinformed you. We keep it locked in a vault forever and ever and ever. And it's like, do I have a case against them? I have, you know, three or four people in the room that said they would destroy it. So. Well, I think you should sue them just to expose it because the, the government's been taught to lie just as an automatic default. Uh, I mean, look, I learned from someone in the Air Force, a nurse, in 1996 that they were taking blood from every baby in the country and putting it in a UN database. And one of the databases for a multi-state area was in San Antonio. And I read these documents on air. Of course, it wasn't until a decade later that people heard my show, found out about it, sued, got the documents, and then now it became a big national news story. And then we learned all over the world it was happening, just as my source told me. They, they do whatever they want, is my point. Of course they do. And I'll go back to what I said at the beginning of the show when I said last hour, what I'll say this hour. This is the most important thing. It hit me so hard yesterday. Thousands and thousands and thousands of declassified and leaked and exposed programs. Some of the programs had tens of thousands of people in them. Some of the programs had only a few hundred people in a small town. But it, you know, it varied. The point is, is that many of these programs were lethal, where the government would kill large groups of totally innocent good people. It wasn't like they were just killing people that had been arrested for armed robbery. That would be bad enough because you're like, a government that can do that, you know, could, could do it to anybody. This is a government that knew if they could get army scientists, going back to the 20s and 30s, who were eugenicists. Because remember, Hitler got all, all his ideas from us. To euthanize people, to nerve gas their own troops, to test biologicals on them. The argument is, we've got to do this to find the cure that will save millions. But really, it's higher-ups that just want to see if they can create groups that'll do anything. And it's really to find out who enjoys it, who enjoys hurting people. And out of that, they've built those groups up to be larger and larger and larger. And they are doing mass secret testing. The evidence keeps coming out everywhere. And they're doing it in the water, the food, everywhere. And it's all over the top. And so that's why I can't even really get mad at the minions of this system because it's so diabolical. That, I mean, the, the minions don't even have any uh, imagination what they're dealing with. And I feel completely unworthy because my mind, just like your mind, is more sophisticated than my speech is. I understand this. I can make all the connections. I can see the big picture. And it's something indescribably evil. And when I'm sitting there in a calm, focused place, I just see the devil in my mind's eye with all this data. It is an alien force. It, it, it is not of this world. It is, it is so destructive and anti-life, and it's hoodwinking everyone that's involved in it. It's hoodwinking everybody that thinks they're winning and getting power from it, and I just recoil from it. And in the higher ups of this system, there's like a fake loving sweetness to them and a, and, a, and a fake calmness to them. And they'll say, but you know it's for the greater good. You know there's too many of us. And when you talk to these people that are higher up in the system who know all this, but have made the decision to rationalize it to themselves because they're afraid of it and to play along with it and then promote the evil agenda, It really just makes me dislike myself because I should be doing more. I should find that Rosetta Stone of, of, of enlightenment and awakening that can move this lever so we can save humanity. But then I realize I'm just a man and I'm doing the best job I can. But um, I get frustrated by all the fake criticisms of me because I like real criticism to help me be better. But when it's manufactured and fake and based on people sitting down and going, what lie can we manufacture off some scrap of something that's true to build a larger lie around it? It hurts me for them. This is a system that rewards evil. This is a system that rewards corruption. 
This is a system that rewards dishonor and backstabbing. And it is designed to bring us to the lowest common denominator. It's a giant sucking sound. And it doesn't just suck the jobs out of Canada into the U.S., into Mexico, then to China. And then they, no, then they get rid of the human workers and put in robots and release bioplagues and, you know, kill off the population or sterilize people. And then the giant sucking sound goes deeper than that. And it's just like, what? We're going to all play along with a black hole? We're going we're gonna to play along with death? We're going to play along with Satan? Satan isn't a hot devil cheerleader, folks, in a miniskirt. Satan is death on this planet. And I'm telling you, that's where the rabbit hole ends. And I, I can't believe what we've put up with so far. And how easy it would be to break the power of this evil if good people would just stand up and recognize it. We just, we just put up with more and more and more and more because the modern system is so slick at projecting a facade. Uh, let's go to these calls here. Uh, let's go to Robert in California. Says he's a pilot. I want to talk about the TSA. Thanks for holding, Robert. Yeah, Alex. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a pilot. You know, I just recently got back into aviation, so I hadn't really been dealing with uh, going in and out of the country in private aviation. I just want to kind of point out, you know, if you are rich and privileged, you do not go through TSA or anything like that when you go out to your plane. So if somebody wanted to you know, bring something in or get a nuke on a plane, it'd be so easy to get ridiculous. And we can. Oh no, back. it's all. They all know because exactly, it's all totally fake. You you know, you pull up. And they've got drinks, caviar, whatever. You go on the private jet, because I've been on private jets, on Hollywood people's jets and others. You know, that's how Glenn Beck flies around. So more power to him. Uh, but the $500 tickets to go hear him speak or whatever. But, but yeah, no, there's no TSA there. And that's why Alec Baldwin and all these guys say, I think the TSA is great. Well, yeah, because they're all on private aviation. Exactly, exactly. I and mean, the guy, the customs guy, I mean, he just basically stuck his nose in the airplane, you know, swiveled his head right and left, and that was it. They didn't know. Well, they don't even do that now. I, I've, I've been on, I've been on wide body, you know, thirty million dollar aircraft, and there, there, there's nobody there. All they do is put your name in and phone it in with Homeland Security that you're flying on that aircraft. And if they're calling it a test flight or a demo flight by the airline. And a lot of those things are comped and stuff. Then it's not even on record. I've I've been on aircraft trips where I'm not even on record. I'm on the plane. Hey, by the way, Alex, I was introduced to you by actually coming back from Mexico. I've been living there for six years. And the guy who introduced me to you was actually the border agent when I first crossed the border. The first guy I talked to in the U.S. soil was the guy who turned me on to you guys. What did he say? He said, things here are falling apart. <laughs> you got to listen to InfoWars.com. Alex Jones will tell you all about it. And this was the actual customs agent, the first guy that I talked to when I, you know, pulled over my passport, you know, and, and, and was crossing the border over in, the, in, in Laredo. Well, that's awesome, brother. Yeah, good to hear from you. That is, that is absolutely true about the private aviation. I mean, I grew up with my dad, you know, owning a little Cessna and, you know, on another little aircraft. So, I mean, I remember just going out, getting the plane, taking off, uh, you know, to go visit grandma or whatever and land the plane in the, in the cow pasture. Uh, but the few times I've flown, it's, it's like Star Wars flying in these private jets. I mean, you're up with the pilots and, you're t and you can see planes flying by where they're going 600 miles an hour and you're going 600 miles an hour and those flight lanes. And I mean, it's like Star Wars. And to me, it's obscene, though, when there's a butler there, you know, getting the food out for you. I, I just can't do it. I'm not even saying it's bad to have a private jet. I just, I just, you know, I, I could not, because I could go do events and charge people $200, $400, $500 to come hear me speak. That's really where the big money's at. I should probably do that not by private jets, build up this media operation. That's probably the answer, is do the big professional talks and do that. Um and again, it's not bad to have a private jet and have a butler. I, I just, I, I'd, I mean, I would take every bit of that money and put it towards fighting the globalist. Or buying hospital beds for kids in Africa and stuff like I've done before. I spent a little bit of money on things like that. I don't know, but I guess I'm a bad person. Uh, let's go to uh, real fast. Uh, there was a caller who wanted to 
talk about something I thought was really important, but I guess we're out of time. Uh, Phil in Florida, real fast on Michael Hastings. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. First of all, everybody, I mean, it's already been in movies. They can control the car from up in space. I mean, the, the, there's a movie out where they shut the car down because it was in an accident. No, I mean, that's on record. They all have the cell phone in them, the, the, the new modern cars, that they can control it from space with a satellite. Yep. DARPA, yeah, the DARPA second, admits that, but, but yeah. Well, I'm just trying. I know that I'm preaching to the choir by calling you. But no, uh, you're not. the second thing, huh? No, you're not. Go ahead. Okay. So the second thing is, is that the question about this NSA stuff is, so they're collecting the calls or holding calls. Everybody just loves it. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. But can they manipulate the call? Can they make it look like you called Osama bin Laden? Well, that's, so why, that, I, that's why I got into what happened to Luke Radowski. The NSA planted a few years ago child porn on like 20,000 computers at the Pentagon to blackmail everybody there. No, no. I mean, it, it's the National Pedophile Implantation Facility. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is. It's an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, InfoWars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at InfoWars.com. InfoWars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. 
I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence that know this information is true but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the New World Order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team.